So I'm joined by Alistair Campbell here at Buddy Salterton Literary Festival. What's it like being here in Devon? Well, I know Devon quite well because I, when I was a bit older than you, when I was early 20s training as a journalist, I trained on the Tavistock Times. Uh, and actually coming into Buddy Salterton today, it felt, it had that sort of feel to it. Uh, but it's nice. I like being here. I went for a swim in the sea. Um, didn't really, couldn't really get going very well. The waves it was pretty strong in there. Um, but yeah, nice. Looking forward to tonight. Speak to loads of people. So let's start about the, what the prime minister said today about the about climate change. Mm -hmm. Presumably, he's doing it in order to maybe win the votes of some other people. What if you were? doing still doing your communications for labor what would you be thinking and what would you be saying right now well i'll tell you exactly what I, I watched his speech and i'll tell you exactly what i tweeted if it's the massive change that he says he is, says it is why is he doing it as a press conference not a statement in parliament and if it's such a big change why aren't we having a general election so people can vote for it i think the country's just sick to death of the whole thing and um you know it, there's such an inherent contradiction in what he's saying we're committed to net zero. We're not watering down our commitments. Because here, here's how I'm watering down our commitments. It's just all, and I think they're kind of making things up as they go along. Um, and I think one of the things this government does, I think it gaslights the country the whole time. It, what, what did this thing on the on the on the lectern say? Long term decisions for a brighter future. Or something. They're literally making stuff up day by day. Um, I mean, I honestly do think the country's desperately need to change, and they've got to go as soon as they can. You've claimed that democracy is broken. Why Why do you think that? No, I don't think democracy is broken. I think democracy is under real threat. Look, democracy is broken in some parts of the world. Um, you look at what's happened with Putin in Russia, you look at uh, China, you look at India, uh, you, you know, you look at what was happening in Brazil until quite recently. So there's, and I just think there's a lot of the same things that led to those changes are, are happening in our country as well. So we just got to be very wary. I, you know, you can argue that the fact that eventually the Conservatives got rid of Johnson, the fact that they got rid of trust quite quickly, you could argue that's the system sort of working, but. The country has not had a say in that, um, and I, I, I think that the democracy is under real pressure because the people that we've put in power in recent years have been have been stressing the institutions to breaking point. Don't underestimate how much damage is done to our politics by having somebody as prime minister for a few years, Johnson. I mean, anybody who's known him for longer than three minutes knows he's a liar. Anybody who's known him for longer than 10 minutes knows that you can't trust the guy as far as you can throw him. And we put him in there, and he's done fundamental damage to our institutions, which I don't think Sunak is really doing enough to repair. What do you think should happen over the next six to 12 months? Well, I mean, the country's drifting. There's no real leadership. There's got to be change. There's got to be an election. There's got to be, you know, they, they don't have to have it. Because, you know, they, 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 Sunak's democratically entitled to stay there. But what is he for? What is this government for? And I just think with the scale of challenges that we face, the scale of the number of things that just frankly don't work in this country. I actually, here's, <laughs> I actually sent home a message today saying, don't quite believe it, but I got in on time today. Both the trains I got were on time. And that's like a sort of bit of a shock. You know, the trains worked. Uh, but, you know, even going down to swim in the sea today and all the people say, oh, you've got to watch out for the sewage. And I'm thinking, you know, we really, we, you come to a beautiful place on the seaside and you've really got to worry about whether there's going to be sort of brown stuff floating alongside you as you swim. It's just, you know, and they've allowed this to happen. I do think... You know, Sunak obviously gets a lot of the flack now because he's the Prime Minister, but a lot of these problems go back to Cameron and Osborne and austerity. A lot of the problems go back to Brexit and a lot of the problems go back to Johnson. So talking about elections, in Exeter we had May elections for councillors and only 36% of the population went to vote. So that's so two in three adults didn't vote. Yeah. What would you recommend or encourage people to do to vote? Well, as it happens, this is, this is a minority view. I am actually in favour of compulsory voting for local, all local and national elections. Um, but short of that, what has to happen is that it's the challenge to politicians to rebuild that link so that people feel they not only that they, that they can have a say, but they must have a say. 
And, you know, the book that I'm talking about tonight is essentially is about that. It's about how do you get involved? How do you get engaged? But trying to make people understand they do have agency. I think what's happened is that people have just sort of given up hoping that they can make change through their own political activism and, 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 and let alone through voting. So, you know, and I, and I think it's tragic that when you meet young people in particular, young women in particular, you say, oh, there's no point in voting. They're all the same. Nothing ever changes. It's just nonsense. They're not all the same and things are changing fast. And the question is, do you want to be part of that change, have a say, say in that change or just sort of walk on by? So Labour will change the voting age to 16 if they win the next general election. What do you think about that? I'm totally in favour of it. Totally in favour of it. And one of the best things about the Scottish referendum was the fact that 16 and 17 year olds had a say. And it changed the nature of the debate. And even though a lot of them voted in a way that I wouldn't necessarily want them to vote, I just think it, it, it just made the debate healthier. And I'd, I'm, I'm even thinking we should bring it lower, but match it to political education in schools, proper Ed, the, we are one of the most ill-informed countries on the planet. You go to France and Germany, they re, people really have an understanding of how their politics works. A lot of people in Britain, they, they, you know, partly it's because of the way the media covers politics, but it's also the fact that we don't have proper political education in this country. So when you were in power for over a decade, why did lowering, lowering the age of voting not come to your mind, or did it come to mind? We talked about it, um, and... I guess, you know, the, the, the difference between sitting here and saying what I think about an issue and people actually being in government, having to address different priorities. I guess we didn't think at the time that it was a big enough priority, but I think that our politics, you know, I don't think our democracy is broken. I think democratic institutions can be, can be made stronger, but our politics feels like it's breaking. And I think we need real radical political change. And one of those changes, I think we should be to vote lower the voting age. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to say about your book quickly? <laughs> Buy it. <laughs> uh, no, no, you can say it. I don't, listen, that, that's like saying, you know, but there it is. It's called, but what can I do? Why politics has got so, gone so wrong and what you can all do to fix it. The main thing to do to fix it is to take an interest, get engaged, get involved and not think that you can't make that difference because you can. Thank you.